know where we are by looking at the blueprint or structure of the book of Revelation once again. After having come out of the sick room or the kingdom room, we finally arrive at the last and the grandest one, the master of the room or room number seven, which is the holy city. We enter through the main entrance of room number seven. Room number seven, which is Revelation chapter 21 and 22. The last we have arrived at the final and most glorious room, the very sanctuary of God, the holy city, New Jerusalem, the eternal home of the immortals, which is also the everlasting capital of the universe, the new heavens and the new earth. We will start from the end of the millennium to eternity forever, both without end. Revelation chapter 21 The new Jerusalem descends to a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God of heaven, like a beautiful bride prepared for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, the home of God is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will remove all their sorrows, and there will be no more death or sorrow, or crying, or pain. For the old world and its evils are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things new. And then he said to me, Write this now, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give the springs of the water of life without charge. All who are victorious, we inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But cowards who turn away from me, and unbelievers, and the corrupt, and murderers, and immoral, and those who practice witchcraft, and idol worshippers, and all liars, the doom is in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plates came and said to me, Come with me, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So he took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It was filled with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious gem, crystal clear like just blue. Its walls were broad and high, with twelve gates guarded by twelve angels. And the names of the twelve tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had twelve foundation stones. On them were written the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. When he measured it, he found it was square, as wide as it was long. In fact, it was in the form of a cube, for its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles. Then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick. The angels used a standard human measure. The poly gates and the crystal gems walls. The wall was made of jasper and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones, elite, the twelve gems. 
The first was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third Agate, the fourth Emerald, the fifth Onyx, the sixth Carnelian, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Topaz, the tenth Chrysophrase, the eleventh Jacinth, the twelfth Amethyst. The twelve gifts were made of poles, each gift from a single pole, and the main street was of pure gold as clear as grass. We now take a look inside the glorious and eternal city. The main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. No temple could be seen in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are his temple. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illumines the city, and the Lamb is his light. The nation of the earth will walk in its light, and the rulers of the world will come and bring the glory to it. Its gates never close at the end of day, because there is no night, and all the nations will bring the glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, no one who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation chapter 22 And they do show me a pure river, the water of life, clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb crossing down the center of the main street. On this side of the river grew a tree of life bearing twelve crops of fruit, with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer by anything be cursed, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and His servants will worship Him. And they will see His face, and His name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no night there, no need for lambs or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. And the angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord God will tell the servants what the future holds, and send his angel to tell you what will happen soon. Lo, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the prophecy written in this scroll. I, John, am the one who saw and heard all these things. And when I saw and heard these things, I fell down to worship the angel who showed them to me. But again he said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers, the prophets, as well as all who obey what is written in this rule. Worship God. Then he insulted me. Do not seal up the prophetic words they have written, for the time is near. Let the one who is doing wrong continue to do wrong, and the one who is bad continue to be well. The one who is good continue to do good, and the one who is holy continue in holiness. See, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay all according to the deeds, and the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so they can, they can enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sufferers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol, worshippers, and all who love to live alive. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I have brought the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. The spirit and the bright say, Come. Let each one who hears them say, Come. Let the thirsty ones come, anyone who wants to. Let them come and drink the water of life without charge. And I solemnly declare to everyone who hears the prophetic words of this book, If anyone adds anything to what is written here, what will add to that person the place described in this book? And if anyone removes any of the words of this prophetic book, God will remove that person in chair in the tree of life and the holy city that are described in this book. He who is the faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all.
a new heavens, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem which will land upon it, where we will live happily ever after, in eternity, forever and ever. Notice there's, there's no end to room number seven because it concerns eternity in the new heavens and the new earth. Are you now prepared and ready to meet your maker? So Winston Churchill was prepared and ready to meet his maker. Hear what he said. I am prepared to meet my maker. Whether my maker is prepared for the great ordeal of meeting me is another matter. <laughs>